There was a time when Cash Money Records ran hip hop. Hit song after hit song, they could not be stopped. But after many scandals, everything fell apart. Many have heard the stories of artists leaving the label. I know Busta recently left Cash Money at Creative Differences, I guess. Is that what's happening with you? Pretty much. But few people know about the poor treatment of their music producers and how this contributed to their downfall as well. Everybody, on the, everybody that's a part of that hasn't got any money. And when you hear the many stories of producers allegedly getting screwed over, it starts to become clear why Cash Money Records fell from hip hop's graces. For example, one of the people responsible for Cash Money's meteoric rise in the late 90s was Manny Fresh. He was the architect of the Cash Money sound and a big reason for their success. His run was absolutely insane during this period. In the four year span between 97 and 2000, he produced 14 full albums for Cash Money artists single handedly. Like that's absurd. Which makes it all the more frustrating when you hear about how Manny Fresh was treated by Cash Money. So let's take a look at the first Cash Money hit that put them on the map, produced by Manny Fresh, the song Ha. This was off Juvenile's album 400 Degrees, which went on to sell 5 million records. Not to mention that beautiful album cover, who needs the Mona Lisa when you got this? And when you break this beat down, it has some signature Manny Fresh ideas in it. For one, something that you'll notice with this beat and many other Manny Fresh beats is the use of limitations. Here's Manny Fresh explaining this production ethos. Old drum machines had eight outputs. Every song that you heard early Cash Money was only eight sounds. Regardless to what was going on, whatever you heard, I could only do eight sounds at a time. So that made it super creative. You got eight sounds, figure it out. This makes sound choice really important. For this beat, check out the choice of the bass synth. It's really unusual, like it would belong to a kid's show or something. <laughs> There's also this other unique layer here that really fills up a lot of space in this beat. And then we have all the drums and the bass. Notice what he does with the clap placement though, it's just a really unusual idea here too. And outside of one or two extra sounds used for the hook, this is everything in the beat. And so even though this beat became Cash Money's first hit, followed up by many, many more in the years following, all produced by Manny Fresh, even with all this success, Manny Fresh chose to leave Cash Money. So why? Well, it's a theme you're gonna see constantly throughout this video, but allegedly, Cash Money wasn't being forthright about the money owed to him. It's a pretty absurd way to treat the architect of your label's sound. But hey, maybe this was Cash Money's rationale. If you're one of the hottest labels, maybe you think you don't need in-house production. Maybe you can bring in outside hit makers and they'll gladly make beats for you, right? Well, let's take a look at what happens when Cash Money does this, as exemplified by the song, What Happened to That Boy. What happened to that boy? This 2002 song was produced by the Neptunes who up to this point had a lot of hits under their belt. They were brought in to make this beat for Baby's debut album and this beat is absolutely incredible. It might be my favorite Neptunes beat of all time. The main component in this beat is this really interesting sound here. And much of this beat is comprised of percussion and these claps similar to Ha, ironically enough. But what I find really interesting about this beat is the low end. You don't really hear this often, but it sounds like there's some amount of reverb put on the low end elements like this kick and this bass tone. A really unique way to make the beat sound much more full and a phenomenal beat overall here as well. But unfortunately, this is yet another instance of Cash Money deciding to make the same error. By allegedly not paying the Neptunes for this beat either, it led to a lot of problems in the future. The pusher going at Cash Money, Young Money goes all the way back to 2001, I'm told, with what happened to that boy. There was a non-payment at this point. And if you look back, Pharrell never worked with a cash money artist after this moment. 
Years later, it's said that the non-payment on this beat is why Pusha T eventually attacked Lil Wayne and Drake. It was on behalf of Pharrell being wronged over this beat. You know, I didn't want that, man. I didn't. I, I, it still, it still breaks my heart to this day because I would have loved to have heard those guys on a song together or heard a joint project together. Pusha and Wayne or Pusha and Drake. Pusha and Drake. I would have loved to have seen that. Now let's think of what Cash Money has done up to this point. Not only do they mistreat their in-house producer who helped them build Cash Money, but now the hit making producers know they aren't going to get treated much better either if they work with Cash Money as well. This is definitely the wrong message to send out about your label, but hey, not all is lost. There are plenty of solid workhorse producers who make great beats that they could bring on and hopefully create some hits with. Well, cue to Lil Wayne's a huge 2008 hit, A Millie. Don't you hate a shy bitch? Yeah, I ate a shy bitch. She ain't shy no a beat made by Bangladesh, who was a producer with a solid resume working with many artists up to this point. I actually did a breakdown of this beat in an earlier video, but it's amazing just how simple this beat really is. First, here's a sample that was used. <laughs> That vocal gets isolated, stretched, and pitched. And beyond that, this beat is put together in a very simple way with an 808 and a clap. With a switch up where it's just a snare with a sample. And this song was an absolute hit, helping the Carter 3 sell a million copies in its first week alone, which very few albums did at this point in history. But yet again, this is where we see some more tomfoolery. As per Bangladesh, he was not paid what he was owed for producing this song, and he wasn't the only one either. Many other producers also stepped forward and said they hadn't been properly paid for their contributions on this album either. So at this point, which producers do you have left? No more in-house production. The star producers see if they produce for cash money, they're gonna have a hard time getting paid. And the same is true for the workhorse producers as well now. And this poor treatment of producers can explain in part why cash money is basically no more. And the only time they're in the news is over yet another controversy. So the lesson here today, pay your producers. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out this one next to me. It's another very similar video essay on beat making. Hit like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're having a good week. And hopefully I will see you next week. Bye bye.